you may wish to watch the previous video in the playlist first, the one that proves that the square root of 2 is irrational. Before we start on the proof that the square root of 3 is irrational, let's consider the following observations. If we square 1 and divide it by 3, that is 1 times 1, which is 1 divided by 3. Now that doesn't go and we have a remainder of 1. 2 squared divided by 3, well that's going to equal 2 times 2, which is 4, divided by 3. That goes once with a remainder of 1. 3 squared divided by 3, well that's 9 divided by 3. That goes 3 with a remainder of 0. 4 squared divided by 3, well that's going to be 16 divided by 3. And that's going to go 5 times with a remainder of 1. 5 squared divided by 3, well that's going to be 25 divided by 3. And that's going to go 8 times with a remainder of 1. 6 squared divided by 3 is going to be 36 divided by 3. Now that's going to go into this 12 times with a remainder of 0. Let's concern ourselves with this one here and this, where we can see in both cases the remainder was 0. Here we've got 3 squared divided by 3 goes 3 times with a remainder of 0. If we look at the thing that was squared, i.e. the 3, and we divide that by 3, we go once with a remainder of 0. If we look at the next one, which is 6 squared divided by 3, now that will equal 12 with a remainder of 0. If we again look at the thing being squared and divide that by 3, we get 2 with a remainder of 0. So we can see that when we had something squared and it could be divided by 3, then the thing being squared can also be divided by 3. So if y squared can be divided by 3 exactly, then y can be divided by 3 exactly. Let r belong to the natural number set. Then we can write r as belonging to the natural number set of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and so on. If I now say what's 3r, well 1 times 3 is 3, 2 times 3 is 6 and so on and we can see that we go up to 5 where 5 times 3 is 15. And if we look at all of these numbers, we can see that all can be divided exactly by 3. Now, if y can be divided exactly by 3, then y must be one of these numbers. Therefore, y equals 3r. For the proof, we assume the square root of 3 is rational. Therefore, we can write the square root of 3 equals p over q, which is a ratio in its lowest terms. And the p and q have no common factors. And we also assume that q does not equal 0. If q was to equal 0, the ratio would not be a number. In other words, it wouldn't be defined. Just to remind you what a rational number is, 4 is 4 over 1, 7 can be expressed as 7 over 1, and 1.5 can be 3 over 2. And we can see that the 4, the 7, and the 1.5 all can be expressed as a ratio. And we can see the ratio is in the lowest common terms. Now that's what defines a rational number. If it can be expressed in a ratio in its lowest terms with no common factor. We'll start with the assumption that the square root of 3 equals the ratio p over q. We'll then multiply both sides of this by q. And consequently, we'll see on this side that the q's cancel. And this will leave us with the square root of 3q equals p. We'll now square both sides. And of course, we'll then be left with 3q squared equals p squared. Let's consider this side here, the left-hand side. It's 3q squared. Now that means that this can be divided exactly by 3, i.e. give no remainders in the division. If we look at the other side, because it's the same in terms of its value, it too must be capable of being divided by 3 and not giving a remainder. Because this is 3q squared, 
we can obviously divide it by 3 to give q squared so we can see it goes exactly and this is the same value so it too can be divided by 3 because the other side is divided by 3 it means this side clearly must be divided by 3 without remainder i.e. they go exactly now this is important for the proof we have already shown that if a number can be divided exactly by 3 then it can be replaced by 3r refer to the beginning of the video if you miss this now I'm going to take this here and I'm going to write it out again so you can see we have 3q squared equals p squared and we've just shown p squared this can be divided by 3 so I'm going to replace this by the 3r so on the next line we can now write 3q squared and that's going to equal and I'm going to replace the p by the 3r and of course that's going to be squared so the next line will be equal to 9r squared when I've squared the 3r both can be divided by 3 this side the 3's cancel to give us q squared and on this side the 3 and the 9 will cancel down to 3 to give us 3r squared and if I have a look at this side well clearly it can be divided by 3 to give r squared which means the other side can also be divided by 3 we have shown that p and q can both be divided by 3 therefore the ratio p and q have a common factor the common factor is 3 the fact that p and q have a factor of 3 also goes to show that the ratio p to q is not in its lowest terms at the start of this proof we assume that the square root of 3 is rational therefore the square root of 3 can be represented by the ratio p over q in the lowest terms with no common factors between the p and the q now starting off with this assumption we've gone through a process and we have shown that p and q do in fact have a common factor and the common factor they have is 3 consequently it goes against the assumption we've made at the beginning therefore the square root of 3 is not a rational number if it's not a rational number it is in this case an irrational number and we've proved this by something referred to as proof by contradiction Check out the supporting website for these videos and also consider subscribing to the YouTube channel and get an automatic update every time I upload a new video. Also consider subscribing to the Google Plus Circle that relates to these videos.